So uh, let me continue with uh, what we were doing in the previous lecture. So let me quickly recall: we start with the commutative Turing R with with, uh, with unit uh, unit element one, and we define this prime prime spectrum, which corresponds to uh, the point the prime ideals of R being thought of as points of the prime spectrum spec R, and then we define this Zariski topology on the prime prime spectrum, which is which comes out of ideals of R, given an ideal of R. Uh, we define a closed subset defined by the uh, by that uh, defined by the ideal namely it's all those it consists of all those points in the prime spectrum uh, which correspond to prime ideals which contain the given ideal okay and uh, sets like this uh, form uh, uh, closed sets for a topology called the zariski topology they satisfy the conditions the axioms for closed sets okay and this is called the zariski topology on the prime spectrum of r and uh, the the formation of the spectrum is actually a functor it is a what is called a contravariant functor okay so uh, it's a contravariant functor from the uh, category of uh, rings commutative rings with one uh, the objects are commutative rings with one and the morphisms are ring homomorphisms which take one to one and it's a contravariant functor from this category to the category of topological spaces namely it ident it it associates to every r as spec r which is a topological space and to every arrow uh, uh, every ring homomorphism it associates uh, an arrow in the uh, a continuous map in the reverse direction in for the corresponding topological spaces given by this prime spectra okay we uh, this reversal uh, of the arrow when you apply the spec is uh, is what is meant by uh, its contravariance okay and it is a functor all right uh, of course if you if you do not know the definition of a functor you can always look it up uh, the idea of a functor is uh, something like a function it is a generalization of generalization of a function the idea is it has to go from what is called one category to another category and the category is supposed to consist of objects and uh, morphisms uh, uh, maps between objects and of course these maps have to preserve uh, if the objects have some structure the maps have to preserve this structure so for example we are all familiar with so many categories for example category of sets is a category for which the objects are sets and the maps are just maps of sets the morphisms of the category are just maps of sets we are also familiar with the category of groups for which the objects are groups and the maps are uh, the are group home morphisms similarly you have the category of rings the objects are rings and the morphisms of the category uh, or the arrows in the category are ring homomorphisms okay and for example we all you can also talk about the category of topological spaces where the objects are topological spaces and the morphisms are continuous maps between topological spaces similarly you also can talk about uh, 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 you know category of modules over a ring and so on and so forth okay so uh, uh, the fact is that uh, a functor from one category to another is that is something that does the following thing uh, given an object in the source category 
it gives you an object in the target category given a morphism in the source category between two objects it gives you a morphism between the corresponding uh, objects in the target category and the only thing is that the arrow in the target category may be in the reverse direction if it is in the reverse direction it is called a contravariant functor if it is in the same direction it is called a covariant functor of course another Im uh, example of uh, uh, um, you know a category is the category of top uh, I mean of, of vector spaces over a field uh, the objects are all vector spaces over a field and uh, the maps are uh, the linear maps that is also a category. So spec is a contravariant functor from the category of uh, rings commutative rings with one the objects are commutative rings with one and the morphisms are ring homomorphisms which carry one to one and from this category spec is a contravariant functor into the category of topological spaces namely the category for which the objects are topological spaces and the morphisms or the maps are the continuous maps. So what it does is that to every ring R uh, commutative ring R uh, with one it it associates spec R which is a topological space given the Zariski topology and to every arrow in the category of rings namely to every ring homomorphism which takes one to one it associates a continuous map in the reverse direction of the corresponding topological spaces so it is a contravariant functor okay and the point that I uh, want to recall is that the if you take the closed subset z of i that itself is a spectrum and it is actually identified with the spectrum of the quotient of r by i okay and if you look at uh, uh, the open subset that corresponds to the complement of uh, uh, the ideal generated by a single element that also is a spectrum that can be identified with the spectrum of the ring localized at that element okay. So uh, so, uh, so roughly the point is that uh, the uh, uh, closed subsets correspond to quotients okay and uh, open subsets given by uh, complement uh, of a single uh, function or a single element uh, uh, the zero locus of a single element they correspond to uh, localizations by that element okay so uh, so the the fact is that just like you know in the in the usual algebraic geometry when we first started out on this side we put you know uh, we put affine space and then we put closed subsets of affine space and then we had a arrow reversing equivalence that went from closed subsets here to radical ideals on this side on this side we put radical ideals inside the polynomial ring in as many variables as the dimension of the affine space we started with and there is a similar thing that is going on here. So what you can do is actually put on this side <coughs> you can just put uh, closed subsets of spec r <coughs> on this side on that side you can put uh, ideals uh, so if you want I can put uh, ideals of r. So again you have a there is a z map like this which takes any ideal to uh, z of i which is a closed subset in spec r and then there is a <coughs> there is a map like this which is script i which takes to any subset t it takes it to uh, 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 i of t okay and uh, what is i of t i of t uh, is uh, so t is a subset of spec r so it, it is a certain collection of points which correspond to certain prime ideals and i of t will simply be the intersection of all those prime ideals so i of t will be the inter this will be defined to be equal to the intersection of all those p such that the the point corresponding to p is in t okay and uh, uh, again you will see that uh, here closed subsets if you take the set of closed subsets that corresponds to that is a bijective correspondence with radical ideals on this side that is ideals which are equal to their radical and uh, uh, and this will also be arrow uh, reversing uh, sorry this will be uh, inclusion reversing.
namely uh, uh, larger the ideal smaller the closed subset larger the closed subset smaller the ideal in particular uh, the ideal that corresponds to the unit ideal that will give rise to uh, the null set the ideal which corresponds to 0 will give you the whole space okay and uh, uh, and you have statements uh, uh, there are very uh, there are there are statements here which correspond to the kind of statements that we got in the case of affine space okay so uh, here we got it between closed subsets of a n and uh, ideals of the polynomial ring in n variables over k we have similar statements here so here also you have you know if um, you have statements like uh, 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 z of i1 is equal to z of i2 if and only if uh, well rad i1 is equal to rad i2 okay you have a statement like this then you have also the uh, the statement that uh, um, uh, z of i of t is just t bar the closure of the set t and you also have the null shell and such uh, in its uh, very ring theoretic form which is i of z of uh, i script i of z of capital I is rad i this is the uh, mind you uh, this statement uh, analogous uh, the analogous statement in the case uh, uh, for the affine varieties was a very deep statement it was a null shell and such but, uh, but it is true in this sense for any commutative ring okay it is already there it is God given. So you have this very beautiful uh, thing happening you start with the uh, you start with the commutative ring R with 1 then there is automatically this beautiful picture which on one side translates from ideals to uh, closed subsets okay and in fact uh, as I told you uh, uh, it is more uh, uh, this is at uh, at the level of R but if you want to go outside of R and you want to consider other rings gotten from R like for example you want to consider quotient rings of R and uh, you want to consider localizations of R then you will end up with going to the close uh, the quotients of R will correspond to the uh, again closed sets okay uh, and uh, the uh, localizations of R by single elements will correspond to the closed sub the complements the open subsets given by complements of those closed subsets corresponding to that single element okay the ideal generated by the single element. So you get a uh, very beautiful uh, you know uh, on this is you may call this as the geometric side you can call this as the commutative algebraic side but the beautiful he thing here is that the geometric side has been cooked up from the algebraic side the space spec R itself has been cooked up from R I mean there is no uh, there is no in analogy uh, here when you compare it with here we we started with polynomial ring in n variables and that was being thought of uh, as acting on as functions on the affine n space okay we already had a space here but so you had a space namely k n and you had the polynomials on that space and using these polynomials you define the Zariski topology here and you got all these nice correspondences and equivalences equivalences but in this case what you are doing is you are starting with a ring okay you are cooking up a space using that ring namely the spectrum and then you still get uh, this beautiful uh, correspondence with uh, all these properties which are just uh, uh, very very analogous to what you got in this case okay. So uh, this is this is at a first point you should uh, therefore see feel that you know uh, you should be able to catch the uh, you should be able to catch the space from the ring of functions okay so I will tell you what the arrow uh, what is this max spec okay it is very simple so what you do is that you give me anything on this side namely you give me a finitely generated k algebra which is an integral domain okay for example say this one something like this then of course this is also a commutative ring with 1 all right take each spectrum okay take spec of this the spec of this will contain all prime ideals okay but what you do is you take a smaller subset namely you take the max spec and what is max spec it is not prime ideals but it is maximal ideals so you know every maximal ideal is prime and the converse is not true so you restrict to only the subset of maximal ideals okay that will be a subset of the prime spectrum 
the maximal spectrum is given is, is denoted max spec it is a subset of the prime spectrum which is given by spec and since a subset of a topological space automatically gets a induced topology what will happen is that max spec will also get a topology it will get a Zariski topology induced from the topology on spec okay the beautiful thing is if you take max spec of this along with that topology it will be exactly homeomorphic to z of p okay. So in particular what I am saying is if you take max spec of this you will simply get back a fine space up to homeomorphism see we have already seen this in the null seven sets I have already told you that max spec of this is actually k n because every point in k n corresponds to a maximal ideal in the polynomial ring that is exactly what the null seven set says so what the null seven set says is that max spec of this as a set is exactly a fine space the point with coordinates lambda i corresponds to the maximal ideal given by x i minus lambda i with generators x i minus lambda i right that is what the null seven set says but that is just identification of max spec of the polynomial ring in n variables with a n with k n in fact it is just a set theoretic identification but what the claim now is is that if you take max spec of this with the Zariski topology induced from spec then this identification of max spec of k x1 etc xn with k n will actually be an topological isomorphism a homeomorphism from affine n space to uh, max spec of k x1 etc xn so it is not so the null cell sets is not just a set theoretic uh, bijection it is a topological isomorphism it is a homeomorphism okay so in other words even if I do not have this side I can get back my affine space by simply taking max spec of polynomial ring in n variables so that is a so that is a beautiful thing so this whole side I can reconstruct from here by simply applying this max spec and then it is a matter of uh, it is a matter of exercise to check that uh, this followed by this is the identity and this followed by this is the identity so that these two are actually inverse inverse associations okay and of course when you check that you will have to worry about isomorphisms okay but that can be done okay so uh, mm, so in fact uh, to check that these two are inverses of each other uh, in a rough in to in a rough way you can do that checking now but then I need to tell you what are the uh, morphisms on this side so I, I need to go and uh, go on and explain uh, morphisms of uh, varieties okay so um, so let me write that the for a finitely generated k algebra uh, k k y1 by p which is an integral domain domain uh, uh, we have a homeomorphism max spec k y1 y n mod p to uh, z of p which is considered as a closed subset of a n a m so maybe I if I let me let me use m here let me also put the m here a m k okay so the point is that it is a homeomorphism okay and how does one uh, uh, see it let me try to explain that so this is exactly how you go from uh, here to here okay so you know if I start with z of p inside a m where uh, p is a prime ideal in uh, uh, polynomial ring uh, over k with m variables which is the affine coordinate ring the ring of functions on a m the larger space okay then uh, what is the uh, what is the ring of functions on zp it is the 
quotient of the ring of functions on AM modulo p namely it is this so that is what you get when you go from here to here and then when you come back what you will get is max spec of k of y1 etc ym by p and what that statement says is that that is exactly z of p how is that true that is very very simple see what happens is that uh, so what is the proof for this I uh, will just outline that uh, so if you want theorem uh, it is a theorem in its uh, in its entirety but it is actually a corollary because all these are all uh, more and more uh, grandiose versions of the Nullstellensatz okay uh, I mean which you get by using af after putting all this Zariski topology and so on and so forth and using enough commutative algebra okay so these are all various uh, uh, grander and grander versions of the Nullstellensatz so let me explain this so you know this is a Nullstellensatz from AM to uh, 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 max spec uh, k x1 uh, sorry y1 etc ym there is a map like this which is given by you know give me a point lambda 1 etc lambda m that corresponds to to the ideal y1 minus lambda 1 and so on ym minus lambda m this is the ideal this is a maximal ideal in k x1 except k y1 etc ym and then I take the point I put the square bracket to say that I am considering it as a point of the maximal spectrum okay so this is this bijection is simply because of the Nullstellensatz, which, which tells you that you know every ideal of this form is maximal that is true for any field and conversely if your field is algebraically closed every maximal ideal is of this form that is the Nullstellensatz. okay now what you do is you go to you go to the uh, subset which corresponds to z of p okay just think what are going to be the points here which are going to lie here mind you the a point with coordinates lambda 1 through lambda m lies in z of p if and only if every function in p vanishes at each of those points that is the definition you see what is this this is z of y1 minus lambda 1 dot 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 ym minus lambda m this is what it is this is just 0 set of this is just the 0 set of this maximal ideal okay so and you know z of uh, z of this is contained uh, in this belongs to z of p I mean z of this is a subset of z of p if and only if p is inside this maximal ideal okay uh, in other words uh, yeah we if and only if this maximal ideal contains p that is because you can apply the script i if you apply script i okay to z of y1 minus uh, lambda 1 etc ym minus lambda n contained in z of p if you apply script i to both sides you will get i of z of that which is just radical of that which is the same as that maximal ideal contains i of z of p which will be radical of p which is p because radical of p is p p itself because p is prime this is just I am I am using the Nullstellensatz now so what this will tell you that is that this point belongs to this if and only if this is if and only if uh, by the Nullstellensatz the the maximal ideal y1 minus lambda 1 etc ym minus lambda m uh, contains p okay and what does this mean this means that this is uh, in z of p as far as the Zariski topology on the spectrum is concerned so it is an element of max spec k of y1 etc ym mod p see what is max a maximal ideal which contains p the set of maximal ideals which contain p are precisely the set of maximal ideals in the quotient by p the set of maximal ideals of a uh, of a quotient of a ring by an ideal is precisely the set of ideals of the ring which contain that ideal okay okay there is a correspondence between a ring the ideals in a, the quotient of a ring 
by an ideal and the original ring and what is the correspondence an ideal in the quotient corresponds to an ideal which contains the kernel and under this correspondence prime ideals go to prime ideals maximal ideals goes go to maximal ideals it is an inclusion preserving correspondence. So the maximal ideals uh, in k y1 etc ym mod p are precisely the maximal ideals in k y y1 etc ym which contain p okay so that will tell you that uh, so so this will tell you this will imply the proof okay so the uh, so you know if you want to compute uh, co complete this diagram what is happening is that here i have max spec uh, of uh, uh, k y1 etc ym which is identified with am by the Neuschel and such and you know from this to this there is a quotient map and there is map in this direction is the max spec of the canonical quotient map see there is a canonical quotient map from k y1 etc ym to its quotient by p if you apply spec to that you will get the arrows will get reversed you will get a map from max spec of the quotient to the max spec of the parent of the quotient and it is this map which is a closed immersion namely it is an identification of this with a closed subset of with this what is that uh, closed subset with which this is being identified that closed subset is this z of p that is what it means this diagram commutes this is the Neuschwellen sets and this is also derived from the Neuschwellen sets so it is actually the Neuschwellen sets for affine space you restrict it to a closed subset that is exactly the statement of this theorem it is simply Neuschwellen sets you know restricted to a closed subset nothing more than that okay. So um, so that tells you how you get this bijection okay now to make uh, um, to show that it is a homeomorphism okay you will have to show that uh, uh, this is a is a continuous map uh, in both directions okay now that is something that you can very easily check okay so for example let us show that this map the the identification of due to the Neuschwellen sets okay uh, uh, so the homeomorphism I am talking about is this one okay uh, let us first show that this bijective uh, map which is the Neuschwellen sets is actually a homeomorphism let us let us show that that is also pretty easy to see okay so let me do that first. So so it is it is very clear that I have this commutative diagram now I have this commutative diagram all right uh, because of what I explained so you have this bijection you have this bijection this bijection is actually coming from here from this and this bijection is the null show and such I just I will just show that uh, this is a homeomorphism okay once I show this is a homeomorphism this is a closed subset this is a closed subset okay and it will follow immediately that this is also a homeomorphism okay. So uh, to show uh, that this is a homeomorphism that the map let, let me write this map am to max spec k of y1 extra ym is a homeomorphism let me first show so I will first show that this arrow is a homeomorphism okay then I will show this arrow is a homeomorphism I will reduce that this arrow is a homeomorphism and I am done okay. So how do I show something is a homeomorphism I uh, will just have to show that uh, uh, you know it is already a bijective map one way of showing that it is homeomorphism is to show that both the map and its inverse are closed okay. So you know uh, 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 the uh, the condition for a map to be continuous is that the inverse image of every open set is open and that is also equally uh, that is also equivalent to requiring that the, the inverse image of uh, every closed set is closed okay and uh, therefore to check that this is a homeomorphism it is enough to show that this map this arrow is closed 
and it is also which means that it maps a closed set to a closed set and uh, uh, to also show that the reverse arrow is also closed because it is already a bijection ok. So, let me give this some name let me use i and let me call the uh, inverse map in this direction uh, as uh, uh, small z which is i inverse ok and the reason is why I want to use i is because if you give me a point lambda 1 through lambda m I am what I get on this side is actually the ideal of that point which is y 1 minus lambda 1 through y 1 minus lambda m considered as a point of the maximal spectrum which is a subset of the prime spectrum ok and the map from this direction is give me a maximal ideal I am just looking at the 0 set for that maximal ideal which is a single point. The notion sense actually says that the 0 sets of maximal ideals are exactly the single are exactly the single point sets ok. So, that is the reason for this notation i and z. So, you know it is enough to show <coughs> to show that both uh, i and z are closed maps it is enough to show that they are closed maps. So, in other words what does that mean it is enough to show that the map is said to be closed if it be every image of a closed set is closed ok and uh, it is equivalent to even showing that they are open maps but we always uh, work only with closed sets because that is how the Zariski topology is defined it is we specify this in the Zariski topology the topology is specified by only defining closed sets ok. So, we always try to do all the checking with respect to closed sets. So, you see so, uh, so let us start with the closed set here and let us see what its image there is. So, uh, start with a closed set f inside a m then you see what is f f is z of <coughs> some ideal i where uh, you know i inside uh, k y 1 etcetera y m is an ideal this is the definition of a closed set in the Zariski topology. Now what is what is i of what is i of f i of f is look at this it is it is a set of all maximal ideals uh, uh, so let me write that i of f is just i of uh, 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 x where x belongs to f by definition this is the image of a set under a map and so this will be equal to i of how does a point uh, uh, so you know this x in f will have coordinates so you know it will be i of lambda 1 etcetera lambda m where lambda 1 through lambda m is a point of f. So this will be but i of this is supposed to be the maximal ideal corresponding to this point considered as a point of the maximal spectrum is a subset of the prime spectrum. So, what I will get is I will get the maximal ideal y 1 minus lambda 1 and so on y m minus lambda m such that lambda 1 etcetera lambda m belong to f this is what I will get ok. But what is f what is f f is by definition f is z of i we will have to use that and we will like probably apply the null shell ensembles all so you know uh, uh, lambda 1 through lambda m belongs to f if and only if the singleton point lambda 1 through lambda m uh, is a subset of the set f that is if and only if you know uh, I can take ideal of a subset. So, i of lambda 1 lambda m contains i of f ok because you know when you apply script i uh, uh, when you apply script i the inclusion is reversed but this is but what is i of a point it is just y 1 minus lambda 1 etcetera y m minus lambda m and what is i of f it is just i of z of capital I which is rad i. 
it is just rad i. So, what you are going to get is uh, 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 so, so that so the condition becomes if and only if the uh, y1 the, the ideal y1 minus lambda 1 etcetera y m minus lambda m contains rad i okay. But you see uh, uh, this is equivalent to saying that this contains i okay because you know uh, because if an ideal contains i if one ideal contains the other then the radical of that ideal will contain the radical of the other okay. So this is equivalent to saying that y1 minus lambda 1 etcetera ym minus lambda m contains i itself okay of course uh, if y1 minus if this ideal contains rad i it also contains i because rad i contains i conversely if this contains i then it will also contain rad i because you know what is rad i it is all those elements some power of which is in i. So if some power of an element is in i then that power of an element is in this but this is a maximal ideal so it is prime so that element has to be in this so these two are equivalent because the thing on the left side is a maximal ideal which is actually prime it is a primeness okay. So but but what does this tell you but this this is if and only if the point corresponding to this y1 minus lambda 1 etcetera ym minus lambda m this the point corresponding to the spec spectrum is in z of i because this is how the z of i is defined in the spectrum uh, in this in the spectrum of the ring okay. So in other words what is this this is just z of i and so i of s f is z of i which is a closed subset uh, uh, so you know I, sh I should say uh, it is z of i intersection uh, all the maximal ideals okay which is closed in max spec. Mind you, if I take z of i in the spectrum, it will consist of all those prime ideals which contain i. But <laughs> I want, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at only maximal ideals which contain uh, uh, i. So I will get z of i intersection the uh, <coughs> the max spec. And what I want you to understand is uh, uh, there is a small uh, 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 there is a small element of confusion this z of i is the 0 set of i in if you want I will put a subscript here I will put a m okay this is 0 set of the ideal i in a m alright whereas this 0 set of is the 0 set in spec r so there is a difference between this z i and that z i okay. So uh, so let me do that uh, so this is uh, so uh, I will I'll need to I need to write that uh, let me put uh, uh, sp uh, so I, I maybe I will <coughs> I will write it a little larger so that you know you see the difference so here is this is z in am k of i okay and this is z I will put z sub r of i okay where uh, z sub r of i uh, this is co being considered in spec r where where r is of course uh, k y1 etcetera yn okay so there is and this z is z sub this is z sub am uh, let me let me correct that up also okay so the the zero sets are being considered in different uh, zariski topologies one is the zariski topology and the affine space the other is the zariski topology and the prime spectrum but the beautiful thing is it's the same ideal you start you start with the closed set here 
that is given by a ideal is the same ideal that comes from that side when you take its image that makes that image of that a closed set it is the same ideal literally okay. So that tells you that I is a closed map okay so so this is the reason for that last equality so this implies that I is a closed map and uh, in principle uh, one should be able to reverse this whole argument and show that uh, uh, I inverse which is Z is also a closed map. So how will you show that uh, that is also pretty easy so what you do is uh, conversely let uh, T be a closed set in uh, uh, this in max spec k y1 through ym okay so what does this this, this implies t is actually uh, max spec k y1 through ym intersected uh, with a closed subset of the bigger space which is a spectrum of k y y1 through ym okay and uh, closed subset in that is the zero set of an ideal so it will be z sub r of some j where j inside r is an ideal okay and what is this uh, so this so what is z sub r of j it is all those prime ideals in spec r which contain j if I intersect with the maximal uh, spectrum I will get all those maximal ideals in spec r which contain j so this will be the set of all uh, uh, maximal ideals uh, in in this which by the null sets is of the form uh, um, r of the form x y1 minus lambda 1 ym minus lambda m these are all those maximal ideals such that the corresponding maximal ideal uh, y1 minus lambda 1 dot 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 ym minus lambda m contains j okay and this is what t is you can see very clearly that z of t is just uh, uh, small z of t is z sub am of j so it is closed. So let me write that uh, have very little space um, so let me write it anyway then small z of t is just e z in a m of uh, a m sub k of uh, j and which is closed okay. So what is z of t it is going to be you know uh, all those points of a m which corresponds to which correspond to uh, cor maximal ideals which contain j that means it is going to be all the points of z of j in affine space okay so z of t will just be z of a m k of <laughs> the ideal j so what this tells you is that the inverse map uh, of i named small i which is small z that is also closed therefore this is the homeomorphism okay so the moral of the story is therefore that this lower arrow which is the uh, null children sets which says that every maximal ideal corresponds to a point okay that identification is actually a homeomorphism of topological spaces and now it is a matter of routine checking which I want you to do to show that you know under this homeomorphism okay if you see you already know that this diagram commutes okay you know that this is a subset here this is a subset there and you know that this bijection restricts to this bijection this is a closed set this is a closed set okay a continuous map restricted to a subset 
will be continuous for that subset with the induced topology. So what it will tell you is that this the arrow in this direction will be continuous okay and uh, because this is a closed subset here that is a closed subset there and similarly the, the, in the reverse arrow will also be continuous so that will also tell you that this is also a homeomorphism so it is not just a bijection. So that will prove the theorem that <coughs> you have a uh, you have a homeomorphism between z of p and max spec of this and of course this z of p is z in a m okay. So moral of the story is that if I start with z of p here in a m I take its uh, affine coordinate ring I get this quotient ring if I again take its max spec what I get is something that is homeomorphic to z of p okay I get back uh, z of p. So it tells you that if I go like this and come back I get a get something that is not exactly the same as this but something that is isomorphic to this isomorphic in the sense on this side uh, at least we have been able to prove that it is a topological isomorphism but in fact we are going to prove we are going to define what is meant by a morphism of varieties and we will show that this map this map and for that matter this map this map <coughs> Uh, you can also think of it as a in the most general sense you can even think of it as a morphism of uh, affine varieties isomorphism of affine varieties okay. So the moral of the story is if I start with z of p uh, then I go to the affine coordinate ring then if I come by applying this a and then if I come back by applying max spec what I get is not just uh, something that is homeomorphic to z of p in fact you will get something that is isomorphic to z of p isomorphic at as affine varieties and what this isomorphism means uh, it, it should be an invertible morphism so I should define what is meant by a morphism of affine varieties and that is something that I, that I will do. So I am saying that still the picture is not over that is on this side what you are not what we have got in this theorem is just a homeomorphism but it is not just a homeomorphism it is a ho it is even an isomorphism of varieties okay. And uh, that is the that is the story if you go from here to there and come back okay and if you go from uh, if you go this way okay you will also have to show that uh, uh, um, I mean the same kind of argument should convince you that if I start with a if I start with this okay and if I take max spec of this okay then max spec of this can be identified with this because of literally the same uh, argument. And then if you take the affine coordinate ring of that I will get something that is isomorphic to this okay only thing is that uh, the yi is instead of calling the variables as y1 through ym I might call them as if you want uh, uh, you know uh, uh, say t1 to tm or some other names I could give but in any case I will get exactly a polynomial ring in m variables divided by a prime ideal in that polynomial ring which which will go to this prime ideal under uh, an isomorphism between the this this polynomial ring in the y's and the other polynomial ring that I started that I am thinking of okay. So up to so the point is if you go start from here go there and come back what you will get is an object up to isomorphism here isomorphism varieties and conversely if you start with an object here go there and come back what you will get here is an i is an isomorphism of rings okay so that is what happens. So I will I'll stop here and probably in the next lecture we will try to uh, understand uh, what happens uh, for an open set and try to understand uh, uh, how to define morphisms.